Hello, welcome back to my channel. If you're new around here, my name's Kit and this is my world. Thank you very much for joining me. In this episode, I'm going to be discussing a large series of books. Yes, that's right. It's not a tag video. I'm going to be discussing some books that I loved in my childhood, and I had completely forgotten about these books until I recently saw a video by AJ Dunn Reads and Writes. I'll leave a link in the description. Um, and in this video, AJ describes his love of a large collection of books called The Babysitter's Club. And I had never heard of these books, um, but he made a very interesting video about them and it jogged my memory. I had a very similar love affair with a large collection of books when I was in my youth. And this is Alfred Hitchcock and the Three Investigators. Um, it was later just called The Three Investigators. Um, but um, the series originated as um, 43 books published between 1964 and 1987. These were created by Robert Arthur, um, and he wrote, I think, 10 of the original series. Um, and then the other books were written by a variety of different authors. The important thing about the Three Investigators books is, despite the titles, and I will give you some examples of some titles, um, they start with The Secret of Terror Castle, published in 1964. Um, then there's The Mystery of the Stuttering Parrot from 1964, The Mystery of the Whispering Mummy, 1965, The Mystery of the Green Ghost, 1965, The Mystery of the Vanishing Treasure, 1966. And so it goes, Skeleton Island and so forth. Um, the point that I want to make is that despite these um, supernatural sounding titles, uh, the three investigators are very much grounded in reality. And that's why I liked them, because although fantasy was and to a very great extent remains my favourite genre, um, I'm not very good at fantasy that happens in the real world with the notable exception being the Borobles trilogy, which happen in London and our fantasy. Um, but I find it very difficult um, reconciling fantasy in the real world. Um, so I would have struggled with the three investigators if there were actually supernatural things occurring. But there aren't. The whole point of the three investigators is, despite appearances, Occam's razor still applies. And the three investigators, and particularly the main one, Jupiter Jones, he's the intellectual giant of the trio, um, he believes very much in logic and common sense, as did I. I was a very logical child. I was autistic. I didn't know it then, but logic is very important to me. And the three investigators would investigate these mysterious and seemingly supernatural events and then find the rational explanation for what was actually happening. And I suppose in this regard, it's a little bit like Scooby-Doo. Um, you know, there's a ghost that gets investigated and it turns out to be the janitor dressed in a sheet or something along those lines. In, in, in those days, and possibly possibly still nowadays, I'm not sure. Um, books that came in a collection um, often had a page at the back that listed all the titles in the series, and there was a little box next to each one, and you could tick them all off um, and thereby actually be a collector and at the same time deface your book and ruin it. Uh, so um, I ticked all the titles that I owned and gradually worked my way up to having a complete set. Incidentally, I... I still have those. I think they're in my mum's attic in London. I can't get there at the moment. Um, but I looked online to see how much it would cost to buy a complete set of three investigators books. And it was very nearly £3,000. I'm not exaggerating. It was 2,900 and something pounds, I think it was. Um, so... I won't be able to wave any of them around for you and show them to you, but there will be graphics and things, no doubt. Editor kit will sort something out for you so that you don't slip into a coma with boredom. Um, but the three investigators books were exciting for me because, as I've already mentioned, um, despite having supernatural themes, they were also um, steeped in logic and common sense. Um, but... Uh, 
I also liked them because they were filmy. Um, the well, the title suggests it. It's Alfred Hitchcock and the Three Investigators. For anyone who doesn't know, Alfred Hitchcock was an extremely famous and celebrated film director. He directed classic films, Psycho, North by Northwest, Vertigo, The Birds. He was a he was huge. He loved posing sideways in profile so that you could get the full effect of all of his curves and his many, many chins. And that profile became famous and it became synonymous with Alfred Hitchcock. You would just see his silhouette in profile and know that it was him. It was his trademark, his calling card. And he was one of the very first Hollywood directors who became a celebrity director. There are lots now, Steven Spielberg and Peter Jackson, loads of them, Ron Howard. um, But uh, Back in the day, uh, generally, audiences weren't as sophisticated as they are now, and they just watched the film and enjoyed it and liked the actors in it. Um, But Alfred Hitchcock was famous in his own right as a director, and people went to see an Alfred Hitchcock film, regardless of who the actors were. So when Robert Arthur decided to make the Three Investigators books, he very cleverly added Alfred Hitchcock's name to the title and made Hitchcock a recurring character in the books. And that's what initially drew my... That's why I went for the Three Investigators books rather than Nancy Drew or the Hardy Boys. It was because Alfred Hitchcock's name was attached. Um, And the way he was worked into the story is that in book one, um, the Three Investigators, led by um, Jupiter Jones... Um, bluff their way into Alfred Hitchcock's office and kind of befriend him. They offer to find him a suitable haunted house to use as a location for his latest movie. And he is so impressed with them that he offers to um, introduce um, the book Um, which will become the story of their adventure. And he doesn't really think much will come of it, but they impress him. And so he does. He, 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 he writes the introduction to the book and he also writes the epilogue to the book as well. And this becomes an ongoing tradition. None of them were actually written by Alfred Hitchcock. To the best of my knowledge, he had no involvement at all, except possibly picking up some sort of paycheck for the use of his name and image, I suppose. Um, But really, his name was attached to it just as a marketing tool and um, his character appeared in it and said things as if it was Alfred Hitchcock saying them, but actually it wasn't. It was all made up. But that doesn't matter. It was really nice. The books would start off with a little bit of an introduction by Alfred Hitchcock, then there would be an adventure, and then there would be an epilogue, um, typically involving the kids sitting around with Alfred Hitchcock and explaining to him how they had solved the mystery. Um, And then he would sort of pat them on the head and tell them how clever they were. The three investigators, they're aged around 13 or 14 years, and um, they're led by Jupiter Jones, who is an orphan who is now living with his uncle and aunt, who run a junkyard. And somewhere hidden amongst piles of junks is a caravan or a mobile home of some description. And in this, the three investigators have made their base. And they have a telephone, a typewriter, some books, uh, some magnifying glasses, simple stuff that children would have access to. The telephone's a little bit of a stretch. I can't remember how they worked it, that they've got their own telephone line. Um, And I don't think it's ever mentioned how they pay for it. Um, But they've got simple stuff. Bear in mind, These books are from the 60s, so there's no internet, there's no real technology, there's a telephone and a typewriter. Um, um, Then there's Pete Crenshaw, he's the second in command, he's a little bit more athletic, he does more of the action type stuff, if there is any action to be had. And then there is Bob Andrews. Um, Bob Andrews is the nerd. He's the um, research and records guy. He spends a lot of time in the library. I think he's got a part-time job in the library and he does a lot of research and then pops into it and gives convenient exposition and um, helps out as a sort of backroom guy. He's got glasses, of course, because he's a nerd. I've just had a look at the Wikipedia article on the three investigators and it tells me um, that the, the house trailer, as it's described, has multiple secret exits. It has a small lab, a dark room, and an office with a phone, typewriter, and reference works, and many other utensils such as a tape recorder or a periscope, um, which were built by Jupiter, who also is kind of an inventor, and he makes useful things for them to use. Hence useful. 
So, so these books would typically begin with Alfred Hitchcock introducing the three investigators to an adult who needed some sort of mystery solved. Um, and as I said, often it was a seemingly supernatural type of mystery, although not always. And then the three investigators would have to prove themselves worthy because, of course, they're children and adults tend to think that children are unreliable at solving mysteries. Um, and they would often do this because they actually had a letter from the chief of police Police, um, which stated that the three investigators were essentially deputised. They had permission from the police, they were known to the police, and the police trusted them and respected them as investigators and recommended their services. They had a business card which said something like, the three investigators, we investigate anything, or something, and it had three question marks on it, and they would hand out their business cards and they'd get quite a bit of work, enough for many novels. Um, so uh, Alfred Hitchcock would introduce them to someone who needed their help and they would have to prove themselves they would solve the mystery it would turn out not to be supernatural at all and then they would all sit around and discuss it with Hitchcock in his office once it was all over and explain to him how they'd solved the mystery and I loved it I was completely addicted to the format and as I said it did lead to me also reading The Hardy Boys and Nancy Drew which were similar and I might make videos about them, separate or together. Let me know in the comments. Do you want to know more about this stuff? Are you still conscious? Anyway, what do I think about them now? Well, the honest answer is I don't. I haven't thought about these books for decades. I had completely forgotten that they ever existed or that I ever read them until AJ reminded me. So my memories now are a mixture of nostalgia and... Uh, I suspect that the books probably aren't as good as I remember them, and so I'm hesitant to attempt to reread any of them again because I don't want to spoil those gorgeous childhood memories. I've got very fond memories of these books, and I'm pretty sure that if I was to read them as a cynical, jaded old man that I've become, and also similar in shape to Alfred Hitchcock, I probably wouldn't find them quite as good. I would, I'd be picking out all the flaws rather than just enjoying the story, which is what they were meant for. So that was me talking about The Three Investigators. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it wasn't too boring. I will get back to tags, I promise. Um, but I felt after AJ inspired me and sent me on a trip down Nostalgia Lane, um, I thought it would be good to just discuss those books with you. Um, and maybe you've read some of them. Um, please let me know in the comments if you're familiar with these books, if you loved them as a child as well. Um, and also if you can clear up any possible historical inaccuracies. I don't know very much and I can't retain information in this weird scrambled brain of mine. So by all means, correct me if I've made any mistakes. And do you know what? I'm also going to use this as an opportunity to shout out a couple of people, because although it's wildly inappropriate in the context of what I've just been discussing, my memory is appalling. And I keep wanting to mention people and give them a shout out and, and sing their praises because I watch certain booktubers and get so excited by them and enjoy their content so much. And I never bloody mention people. So um, I want to shout out Pay at Attention. He is just he's genius genius he's such a clever guy he does all sorts of stuff in his videos uh, he's very very creative he does animation and he does green screening and he does musical numbers um, and he's also really intelligent talking about books he's a proper booktuber he makes me feel like i should just watch his channel and stop trying to make stuff for myself not totally, but um, I admire his bookishness uh, and also his combination of bookishness and being able to make good videos. Um, so pay at attention. Um, I've been watching him for a while and I keep forgetting to give him a shout out. So pay, this is for you. Um, and, and also summer at cozy reading with quaker cats she is so delightful she's such a lovely lovely lady and again a proper booktuber she knows her books and she talks about them articulately and intelligently and she remembers stuff and i'm impressed by anyone who can remember anything frankly and and she talks about these books in a way that makes you feel drawn in and welcomed into her bookish world uh, and it's just lovely but 
In addition to all of that, Summer also has cats. She's a cat lady, a proper cat lady. She's got, I don't know, millions of them. There are cats running around all over the place. Um, and they're always playing. They're always active. They're always cute. And I just love videos that include cats, as long as the cats are happy. Um, and these are very happy cats. Um, they're very lucky to live with Summer. She's a lovely lady. And so... Um, Pay at Attention and Summer at Cozy Reading with Quaker Cats are my two shout outs of the week and possibly the month or even the year because I'm really crap at doing shout outs. Anyway, on that note, I'm going to call it a day. Thank you very, very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did and you haven't already, you know what to do. Please hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, share, comment, do all the good stuff, and I will see you next time. See you later.